welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Winnie the Pooh, Kanga, and Roo, written for you by A.A. A. Milne and adapted for audio by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Winnie the Pooh, Kanga, and Roo. Once upon a time in the Hundred Acre Wood, a kangaroo named Kanga moved in with her baby, named Roo. They set up a nice little house on the edge of the woods and were by all accounts very warm and friendly. Still, you didn't get new neighbors often in the woods, and Winnie the Pooh didn't know quite how to act. He went to call upon his friend Piglet to see what he thought about it. And at Piglet's house, he found Rabbit. So they all talked about it together. What I don't like about new neighbors is this, said Rabbit. Here are we, you, Pooh, and you, Piglet, and me, and suddenly... And Eeyore, said Pooh. And Eeyore, and then suddenly... And Owl, said Pooh. And Owl, and then all of a sudden... Oh, and Eeyore, said Pooh. I was forgetting him. Well, you didn't... Ugh, well, here we are said Rabbit very slowly and carefully. All of us. And then suddenly we wake up one morning and what do we find? We find a strange animal among us. An animal of whom we have never even heard before. An animal who carries her family about with her in her pocket. Suppose I carried my family about with me in my pocket. How many pockets should I want? Um, 16, said Piglet. Well, 17, isn't it? said Rabbit. And one more for a handkerchief. That's eighteen. Eighteen pockets in one suit. I haven't time. There was a long and thoughtful silence. And then Pooh, who had been frowning very hard for some minutes, said, I make it fifteen. What? said Rabbit. Fifteen. Well, fifteen what? Your family. Well, what about them? Pooh rubbed his nose and said that he thought Rabbit had been talking about his family. Did I? said Rabbit carelessly. Yes, you said... Never mind, Pooh, said Piglet impatiently. The question is, what are we going to do about Kanga? Oh, I see, said Pooh. The best way, said Rabbit, would be this. The best way would be to steal Baby Roo and hide him. And then when Kanga says, where's Baby Roo? We say, aha! Aha, said Pooh, practicing. Aha, aha! Of course, he went on, we could say aha even if we hadn't stolen Baby Roo. Look, I'm saying it now. Aha, aha! Pooh, said Rabbit kindly, you have honey for brains. I know, said Pooh humbly. Do you perhaps have any to eat? Piglet fetched Pooh some honey while Rabbit went on. We say, aha, so that Kanga knows that we know where Baby Roo is. Aha means we'll tell you where Baby Roo is if you promise to go away from the forest and never come back. Now, don't talk while I think. Pooh went into a corner with his honey and tried saying, aha, in that sort of voice. Sometimes it seemed to him that it did mean what Rabbit said. And sometimes it seemed to him that it didn't. I suppose it's just practice, he thought. I wonder if Kanga will have to practice too, so she gets what I mean. Well, there's just one thing, said Piglet, fidgeting a bit. I was talking to Christopher Robin, and he said that a Kanga was generally regarded as one of the fiercer animals. I am not frightened of fierce animals in the ordinary way, but it is well known that if one of the fiercer animals is deprived of its young, it becomes as fierce as two of the fiercer animals, in which case, aha, is perhaps a foolish thing to say. Piglet, said Rabbit, taking out a pencil and licking the end of it. You haven't any pluck. It is hard to be brave, said Piglet, sniffling slightly, when you're only a very small animal. Rabbit, who had begun to write very busily, looked up and said, It is because you are a very small animal that you will be useful in the adventure before us. Piglet was so excited at the idea of being useful that he forgot to be frightened anymore. 
And when Rabbit went on to say that Kangas were only fierce during the winter months, being at other times of an affectionate disposition, he could hardly sit still. He was so eager to begin being useful at once. What about me? said Pooh sadly. I suppose I shan't be useful. Never mind, Pooh, said Piglet comfortingly. Another time, perhaps. Without Pooh, said Rabbit solemnly as he sharpened his pencil, the adventure would be impossible. Oh, said Piglet as he tried not to look disappointed. But Pooh went into a corner of the room and said proudly to himself, Impossible without me. That sort of thing. What a man. What a bear. Now listen, all of you, said Rabbit when he had finished writing. And Pooh and Piglet sat listening very eagerly with their mouths open. This was what Rabbit read out. Plan to capture Baby Roo. One, general remarks. Kanga runs faster than any of us, even me. Two, more general remarks. Kanga never takes her eye off Baby Roo, except when he's safely buttoned up in her pocket. Three, therefore, if we are to capture Baby Roo, we must get a long start, because Kanga runs faster than any of us, even me. See one. Four, a thought. If Roo had jumped out of Kanga's pocket and Piglet had jumped in, Kanga wouldn't know the difference because Piglet is a very small animal. Five, like Roo. Six, but Kanga would have to be looking the other way first, so as not to see Piglet jumping in. Seven, C2. Eight, another thought. But if Pooh was talking to her very excitedly, she might look the other way for a moment. Nine, and then I could run away with Roo. Ten, quickly. Eleven. And Kanga wouldn't discover the difference until afterwards. Well, Rabbit read this out proudly. And for a little while after he had read it, nobody said anything. And then Piglet, who had been opening and shutting his mouth without making any noise, managed to say very huskily, And afterwards? How do you mean? When Kanga does discover the difference. Then we all say, Aha! All three of us? Yes. Oh. Why, what's the trouble, Piglet? Nothing, said Piglet. As long as we all three say it, said Piglet. I don't mind, he said. But I shouldn't care to say aha by myself. It wouldn't sound nearly so well. By the way, he said, getting afraid again now that he'd heard the plan, you are quite sure what you said about the winter months? The winter months? Yes, only being fierce in the winter months. Oh, yes, yes, that's all right, said Rabbit quickly. Definitely, maybe, probably. And Pooh, you see what you have to do? No, said Pooh Bear. Not yet, he said. What do I do? Well, you just have to talk very hard to Kanga so as she doesn't notice anything. Oh, what about? Anything you like. You mean like telling her a little bit of poetry or something? That's it, said Rabbit. I don't know any poetry, said Pooh. Well, then why'd you suggest it? I suppose I could make some up. Splendid, said Rabbit. Now come along. So they all went out to look for Kanga. Kanga and Roo were spending a quiet afternoon in a sandy part of the forest. Baby Roo was practicing very small jumps in the sand and falling down mouse holes and climbing out of them. And Kanga was fidgeting about and saying, Just one more jump, dear, and then we must go home. And at that moment, who should come stumping up the hill but Pooh? Good afternoon, Kanga. Good afternoon, Pooh. Oh, look at me jumping, squeaked Roo as he fell into another mouse hole. Hello, Roo, my little fellow. Those are some jumps. We were just going home, said Kanga. Good afternoon, Rabbit. Good afternoon, Piglet. Rabbit and Piglet, who had now come up from the other side of the hill, said, Good afternoon, and hello, Roo. And Roo asked them to look at him jumping, so they stayed and looked. And Kanga looked too. Oh, Kanga, said Pooh, after Rabbit had winked at him twice. I don't know if you are interested in poetry at all. 
hardly at all, said Kanga. Oh, said Pooh. Roo, dear, just one more jump and then we must go home. There was a short silence while Roo fell down another mouse hole. Go on, said Rabbit in a loud whisper behind his paw. Talking of poetry, said Pooh, I made up a little piece as I was coming along. It went like this. Er, now let me see. Fancy, said Kanga. Now, Roo, dear. You'll like this piece of poetry, said Rabbit. You'll love it, said Piglet. You must listen very carefully. So as not to miss any of it, said Piglet. Oh, yes, said Kanga, but she still looked at baby Roo. How did it go, Pooh? said Rabbit. Pooh gave a little cough and began. <clears throat> Lines written by a bear of very little brain. On Monday, when the sun is hot, I wonder to myself a lot. Now, is it true or is it not that what is which and which is what? On Tuesday, when it hails and snows, the feeling on me grows and grows that hardly anybody knows if those are these or these are those. On Wednesday, when the sky is blue and I have nothing else to do, I sometimes wonder if it's true that who is what and what is who. On Thursday, when it starts to freeze and hoarfrost twinkles on the trees, how very readily one sees that these are whose, but whose are these. On Friday, yes it is, isn't it, said Kanga, not waiting to hear what happened on Friday. Just one more jump, Roo dear, and then we really must be going. Rabbit gave Pooh a hurrying up sort of nudge. Talking of poetry, said Pooh quickly, have you ever noticed that tree right over there? Where, said Kanga. Now, Roo, right over there, said Pooh, pointing behind Kanga's back. No, said Kanga. Now jump in, Roo dear, and we'll go home. You ought to look at that tree right over there, said Rabbit. Shall I lift you in, Roo? And he picked up Roo in his paws. I can see a bird in it from here, said Pooh. Or is it a fish? You ought to see that bird from here, said Rabbit, unless it's a fish. It isn't a fish, it's a bird, said Piglet. So it is, said Rabbit. Is it a starling or a blackbird, said Pooh. Well, that's the whole question, said Rabbit. Is it a blackbird or a starling? And then at last, Kanga did turn her head to look. And the moment that her head was turned, Rabbit said in a loud voice, in you go, Roo, and little Piglet jumped into Kanga's pocket. At the same time, Rabbit scampered off with Roo in his paws as fast as he could. Why, where's Rabbit? said Kanga, turning round again. Are you all right, Roo, dear? Piglet made a squeaky Roo noise from the bottom of Kanga's pocket. Rabbit had to go away, said Pooh. I think he thought of something he had to go and see about suddenly. And Piglet? I think Piglet thought of something at the same time, also suddenly. Well, we must be getting home, said Kanga. Goodbye, Pooh. And in three large jumps, she was gone. Pooh looked after her as she went. I wish I could jump like that, he thought. Some can and some can't. That's how it is, unless... Pooh started practicing his jumping in the sand, trying his best to leap like a kangaroo and leaping rather like an overstuffed bear instead. Kanga could really jump long and far and fast, though Piglet, being jostled in her pouch, was wishing that she couldn't. Often, when he had a long walk home through the forest, Piglet had wished that he were a bird, but now he thought, jerkily to himself at the bottom of Kanga's pocket, if this is flying, I shall never, never like it. And as he went up in the air, he said, Ooh! And as he came down, he said, Ow! And he was saying, Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ow! All the way to Kanga's house. Of course, as soon as Kanga unbuttoned her pocket, she saw what had happened. Just for a moment, she was mad about being tricked, but she knew the other animals were harmless, 
and Christopher Robin would make sure Rue was safe. So she thought to herself, if they are having a joke with me, I will have a joke with them. Now then, Rue dear, she said as she took Piglet out of her pocket. Bedtime! Aha! said Piglet, as well as he could after his terrifying journey. But it wasn't a very good aha, and Kanga didn't seem to understand what it meant. Or at least she didn't seem to hear it at all. Bath first, said Kanga in a cheerful voice. Aha! said Piglet again, looking around anxiously for the others. But the others weren't there. Pooh, who had decided to be a Kanga, was still at the sandy place on the top of the forest, practicing jumps. And Rabbit was in his home playing with Baby Roo. He had only meant to keep him busy for a moment, but he was having a lot of fun with the little one and was growing more fond of him by the second. As a result, Piglet was all alone. I am not at all sure, said Kanga in a thoughtful voice, that it wouldn't be a good idea to have a cold bath this evening. Would you like that, Roo, dear? A frosty cold bath? Piglet, who had never been really fond of baths, shuddered a long, indignant shudder and said in as brave a voice as he could, Kanga, I see that the time has come to speak plainly. Funny little Roo, said Kanga as she got the bath water ready, dumping in extra ice to the already cool water. I am not Roo said Piglet loudly. I am Piglet! Yes, dear, yes, said Kanga soothingly, trying not to laugh. And imitating Piglet's voice, too. So clever of you, she went on as she took a large bar of yellow soap out of the cupboard. What will you be doing next? Can't you see? shouted Piglet. Haven't you got eyes? Look at me! I am looking, Roo, dear said Kanga rather severely. And you know what I told you yesterday about making faces. If you go on making faces like piglets, you will grow up to look like piglet, and then think how sorry you'll be. Now then, into the bath, and don't let me have to speak to you about it again. Before he knew where he was, piglet was in the bath, and Kanga was scrubbing him firmly with a large, lathery flannel. Ow! cried Piglet. Let me out! I'm Piglet! Don't open the mouth, dear, or the soap goes in, said Kanga. Of course she knew it was Piglet, but she reminded herself if they were playing a trick on her, she'd trick them right back. There, what did I tell you? Soap in the mouth! You, ugh, you did it on purpose, spluttered Piglet as soon as he could speak again and then accidentally had another mouthful of lathery flannel. That's right, dear, don't say anything, said Kanga. And in another minute, Piglet was out of the bath and being rubbed dry with a towel. Now, said Kanga, there's your medicine, and then bed. What, what medicine, said Piglet. To make you grow big and strong, dear. You don't want to grow up small and weak like Piglet, do you? Well then. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. Come in, said Kanga, and in came Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin, Christopher Robin, cried Piglet. Tell Kanga who I am. She keeps saying I'm Rue, but I'm not Rue, am I? Christopher Robin looked at him very carefully and shook his head. You can't be Rue, he said, because I've just seen Rue playing in Rabbit's house. Well, said Kanga. Fancy that. Fancy my making a mistake like that. There you are, said Piglet. I told you so. I'm Piglet. Christopher Robin shook his head again. Oh, you're not Piglet, he said. I know Piglet well, and he's quite a different color. He's sort of a dirty brownish, and you're all bright pink. Piglet began to say that this was because he had just had a bath, and then he thought that perhaps he wouldn't say that, and as he opened his mouth to say something else, Kanga slipped the medicine spoon in and then patted him on the back and told him that it was really quite a nice taste when you got used to it. I knew it wasn't Piglet, said Kanga. I wonder who it can be. Perhaps it's some relation of Pooh's, said Christopher Robin. What about a nephew or an uncle or something? Kanga agreed that this was probably what it was, 
and said that they would have to call it by some name. I'm Piglet, cried Piglet. I shall call it Poodle, said Christopher Robin, winking at Kanga. Henry Poodle for short. And just when it was decided, Henry Poodle wriggled out of Kanga's arms and jumped to the ground. To his great joy, Christopher Robin had left the door open. Never had Henry Poodle Piglet run so fast as he ran then, and he didn't stop running until he had got quite close to his house. But when he was a hundred yards away, he stopped running and rolled the rest of the way home, so as to get his own nice, comfortable, dirty color again. So Kanga and Roo stayed in the forest, and every Tuesday, Roo spent the day with his great friend Rabbit, and every Tuesday, Kanga spent the day with her great friend Pooh, teaching him to jump. And every Tuesday, Piglet spent the day with his great friend Christopher Robin, not getting a bath. So once again, they were all happy, and Kanga and Roo were welcomed to stay. The End Thanks for listening! 